Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. There's been so much going on it's hard to know where to start. There was a science fair yesterday and I hope to be speaking to the science department about that. There's Matilda happening later this week so I think we're going to have a, a video for the last week that's going to celebrate all the events happening uh, now and as you can see some of us are dressed for sports day because it's also sports day today. So there's lots and lots going on and last week we had a whole celebration of the arts that really happened over both schools in different ways. So there's a big celebration of the arts event in primary and also a, a, an art and design exhibition in secondary. Um, and I have Byron and Ileana, Byron from design, Ileana from primary, to talk about those two experiences. And maybe we'll start with Ileana and telling us a little bit about the celebration of the arts, the 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 concept behind it and also some of the things that you really liked about it. Okay, um, Celebration of the Arts is something that happens every year but this year we thought we would play around with the format coming out of COVID and we re-envisioned Celebration of the Arts and PYP as a um, taking over ISL as a new gallery space. So our guiding uh, design principles, so to speak, was to ask ourselves how can we transform each of the classrooms in a way that when you walked in you felt some kind of um, new experience of the curriculum and could observe the work that students have done um, through the arts and what they've been studying. So, and you could really feel that. Yeah, we, for I mean, example... Every classroom in primary was completely different and had a completely different feeling as a space behind it. Yeah, and, and we had we, we've all gone to museums and so we asked ourselves what does it feel like to go to a museum and what are the things that you see and we thought of kind of three, dimension, three dimensional spaces so how can we hang things from the ceiling or create displays that really move you um, in, the, in the space in a new way than you usually do in a classroom which is maybe usually just on the walls so we created kind of boards in the middle that you'd have to walk around. Uh, we hung branches from the ceiling for the grade three's nature, um, nature theme of cycles and, and birds. Um, in grade two, they, we had a large, they've been studying the Thames River, and so we created a um, classroom long living museum of the river itself, where students built it up using boxes, as we always do in primary, um, but with clay, animals, and collage <coughs> elements for the river. You have to imagine everyone, that the, the classroom, that classroom with a huge river, uh, constructed river in the centre and all the students sitting around presenting, with soundscapes in the background as well of the river and sounds yeah. they'd made and sounds they'd explored and how they'd, they'd shown all that artistically. And just to add, one thing that was important to us is why the arts? Well, when you are thinking of creative ways of displaying information, does that change the way you think about those ideas themselves? And so what we saw with grade two, just as an example, was once students understood that we were building this um, 3D river, then the ideas kept building onto themselves. So then we had, they were saying, what was our experience of going to the river? How do we share what we, um, the animals that we saw when we went down to the banks? And that, that kind of fed itself and became something that we couldn't have anticipated. And there was so much learning going into that as well, wasn't there? All these curriculum, the curriculum yeah. side of exploring issues around the Thames and, and the maintenance of the Thames and yeah. some of the natural issues associated, that all came from that. Yeah. So there was the, arts and curriculum very much mm -hmm. intertwined. Mm -hmm. Another example of the curriculum and, and it interweaving with um, our school, not just PYP but also with MYP um, and the design team was in grade five. Is their, their theme for their space was transitions as they're moving into grade six. They've been holding a lot of workshops with Timia, the MYP counselor. Um, they had just experienced a day in MYP. Um, and so we, we asked themselves to, to create lots of portraits, self-portraits of themselves through different media. And one of those was through music, so we called those musical self-portraits. And then this came out of an idea that Amos and Daniel had been collaborating with how can we integrate sound into our spaces. And Daniel knew of these electronic chips that allowed the students to create their own musical motif. 
and then we could you press a button and you could hear um, there are these very simple musical phrases, but but once you knew that they were representing the student, that that carried a lot of meaning. Yeah, it was it was really nice. Every student had their own their own space, and so when you press the button, you heard their musical biography. If you like, it was mm -hmm. great, and that's actually a good time to come into the um, art and design show because there's this link that we're going to hear about in a second. But before we do, Byron, tell us a little bit about the Art and Design Show and what you thought was really sure. special about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I'll speak on behalf of the Art and Design team who are on, who are not here right now, but... Um, They're all in Sports the Day. The curriculum <laughs> people are in Sports Day. But yeah, um, being involved in all, all of the work, it's um, it's been really good to see it all in, in three dimensions again for, for the first time in a couple of years because we had virtual virtual exhibition exhibitions for the last two years so it's been amazing to see all all the 3D work and the kids having the opportunity this year to actually produce three-dimensional work is really evident and they've they've really made an effort with uh, producing a, a large body of work so it's it's been amazing to actually show it mm. I want I want to say what one thing I think is really special about that show is the sheer variety of materials on display yeah and the possibilities that students are given to to use different materials and showcase their talents in different ways. So you had simple things like lots of wire, wire work, 3D printing, uh, lots of that cardboard material that you can do all sorts of things with. Um, then there's then there's much more, if you like, uh, traditional approaches to art. So there's painting and sculpture, etc. Mm. But the sheer variety of materials that was really impressive. Yeah, and one of them that links to the work that you've been doing is the, the birdhouse. So maybe we should say a little bit about that. Yeah, so that was um, a collaboration between um, Amos and, uh, and the whole of the arts and design, uh, all, of the, all of the teachers. So they all came together to produce um, a number of birds and, and um, models uh, using clay, using 3D printing, using um, various, um, what, however they, they saw fit to produce them. Um, also visiting the Tate Modern and other exhibitions to, to see how they might display those um, and taking inspiration from, from public, public museums. So um, yeah, the birdhouse was, was, was like a place for, for a lot of these objects to come together um, on a large scale. It's worth explaining that one thing we've done is that um students have been to the Tate and the Tate had a soundscape of bird sounds um, which is how that links mm -hmm. to the soundscapes. There's a lot of soundscapes work all around these exhibitions. So you have the soundscape in primary and in secondary you have this huge uh, bird box which you walk inside and had all these birds made within it and this is all coming from the Tate. And actually the Tate came, somebody from the Tate came to the show and said how they impressed they were and that they'd they'd really, really seen a school that had taken ideas from the Tate and, and used them in the kind of creative ways that we had. Yeah, she, she was very impressed by all accounts. Um, Amos, Amos was, was sing, said that she was singing our praises, so yeah, yeah. Um, kudos there, definitely. Um, yeah. So that was just a, a, a short video to celebrate the amazing work that, that's, that's happening around the arts, and I, I, I think we're so good at showcasing students' uh, creativity by giving them opportunities to demonstrate their learning in so many ways. And I think that makes the school actually very unusual. So thank you everybody, uh, I look forward to next week's video, thank you.